Hi, uh, this is uh, Bear Hill Shire Courage and Air Mix Egg Disciplines Clay Sculpting Tutorial Video Part 1. Uh, what we're doing today is taking clay, uh, sculpting it into the shapes that we want, and then we're going to harden it, uh, paint it, and then put it on a necklace. You can use a lot of uh, different techniques after this, because this is really a basic first step. Uh, you can use this for casting and molding. Uh, all kinds of metals, alloys, gold, silver, pewter, uh, even steel if you wanted to. A lot of it depends on where you want to go with it. But uh, the basics of what we're doing today is I started off with the Privy Counselor badges that we have for our Shire. Uh, these are the leading uh, leaders of the group that are elected who have the insignia that they wear to show everybody yet this is I'm in charge of this discipline. Three different disciplines we have are Aramex egg or armament, crewage or crafting, coreg or combat. And as you can see, these are just uh, MS Paint drawings that I've kind of put together as an idea for how we want to make the badges, uh, either as necklaces made out of clay or as um, maybe metal pieces down the road. This would be one of the Knight's badges made out of clay, as you can see there. Uh, it is hardened, so which is nice and then you add on the different ranks to it. What we've done so far to this point is I've done the Coreg and the Aramex Egg uh, badges for the Privy Counselor. I started on the Courage Counselor badge, but the Courage Counselor told me, sorry, too small, do it again. So this is where we've achieved. This is the actual 3D representation of that, and all it is is just clay that I cut into the shapes that we wanted, uh, hardened the clay in the oven, about 275 for about 15 minutes. It's uh, sculpy clay. This is not in the box. This is just in a bag because once you take it out of the box in the bag, you want to keep it, uh, the air off of it. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at uh, Michael's. It's all over the place. This is mostly just uh, regular acrylic type paints. The black is all the apple barrel paints. They're a dollar a bottle. The silver and the gold on there is testers model paints. And it's shiny all over because we did a polyurethane spray finish to protect it. Uh, this stuff, you don't want to get it wet. Uh, basically, that's really all there was to it. We got some chain from Walmart and we got the hooks and eyes from Menards. The screw into the clay before it's hard and then you bake it and then it stays in there pretty solid. Uh, the chains come in a kit from Walmart for jewel crafting. These are going to go around the neck of the counselor and then they get passed on to the next counselor after the next elections. These are the two that we've done so far. Just to give you a better view. I don't know. I think they look pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to do this one right here. Obviously I made this one a little bit too small. So I'm going to use this as a template because that's actually about the size we want it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my stuff off to the side here. I'm going to grab some clay. And we're just going to cut off a chunk. Handy dandy old stick knife. Just work it a little bit to warm it up. Sorry if it's quiet, I'm not one of those video bloggers that feels the need to fill every silence with my voice. Sometimes I might do voices for you though. Okay, so we've got it pretty much warmed up so it's nice and pliable. These are about a quarter inch thick. So we're going to shift for a quarter inch. Old rolling pin from the dollar store or from Goodwill, Savers, whatever. I'm kind of flatten it out here. Still not quite big enough, so I need to add a little bit more clay. I'm just going to take some of the scraps off the top here from the last time I was doing stuff. Warm that up. And you want a nice, clean place to do this because the more things you add into the clay, the, the more 
bad it's going to look later on, like fur, string, food, stuff like that. I know my, my desk is kind of messy here, but it could be worse. So once I've got the clay all warmed up here, I'm going to go ahead and flatten it down. And again, what we're looking for is about a quarter inch thick. We're not building a church here, so it doesn't have to be exact. Just the best guess. Okay, so that's pretty consistently about where we want it. I want to make sure that I've got coverage on there for the whole thing, and I do, so it looks like it's pretty close to where we want it. And one way you can cheat this out is take a toothpick and just poke some holes about where the edges are of what you're trying to do. It does help later, especially when you've got some very fine details on the drawings and you've got to bring those out in 3D. So what this is, it's a crossed paintbrush, a crossed calligraphy pen, and a needle and thread. That's the design. And it's not very thick like the swords or the gears and the hammer are. So we do want to be careful that we're not deforming the clay so much that we can't actually put the shapes on there. Kind of a fun thing to do if you're into this stuff. And if you're just doing this to do it, then, you know, be prepared to have your patience tested sometimes because this doesn't always work. Okay. So when I pull it off, I've got a bunch of holes, so it's connected out to the really. And I'm going to continue to use my paper here as an example. Um, I'm going to basically just draw a line for the shapes that I had. And as you can see here, it actually does work pretty slick. And there's my outline. And then here's my thread and needle. There's my calligraphy pen. So I'm going to do that one last because that's basically a behind shape. The paintbrush is an in front shape and it goes all the way to there. So I'm going to just draw a line like this and we're going to dig it out a little bit. Now this is a, a 3D shape that we want to render up above the clay. We don't want to dig into the clay. Uh, you dig into the clay for stamps, wax seals, things like that. Or if you want to do, um, I forget what they call it, it's the uh, the relief carve-out. Uh, I'm sure I'll think of that name after the video's done, because of course I can't think of it now. But uh, when the Egyptians did their carvings on the wall, they started with a flat surface and they dug into it, and they carved out the wall around the shape. This is the opposite of that. We're building on top of the wall so that we can get a little bit more visibility with the shapes that we're doing here. So as you can see here, it's actually looking pretty close. So what we're going to do now is we're going to carve out, and I'm just going to use a, an exacto knife. We're just going to carve out, and this is a microwave plate, by the way. Uh, I've got a wheel for it that I can put underneath to make it easier to work. And this is especially handy if you're doing the painting part and that we don't have to keep constantly touching the part. You can just spin it around. Right now I need to be pushing down so I don't want to be using this. Very handy, especially if you have an old microwave that blew out. So as I'm kind of carving along, obviously I'm being safe with the knife. I don't want to cut anything off I'm attached to. Friends, fingers, relatives, things like that, you know. So as I'm kind of cutting along here, I'm going to get the best I can. I'm just going to get myself out, get around. We're going to save those. Again, we're not going for perfection right now. We can always clean this up later. Right now we're just getting the rough shapes. I am kind of OCD there, so I'm just going to take out some of those lines. All right, so now we're going to do the smaller shapes. And if you look at the other pieces, you can see 
that. They're just smaller pieces of clay cut out into the shape. And the easiest way to do that is just to make the shape in a flat, draw it out, and then cut it out. Now, I could do it here, again, and just cut these shapes straight down, which would be one way to do it. Um, and then I would just make a new back piece for this outside. Let's just go ahead and do that, because that would probably be a little bit easier. And I want to make sure that I have this size here, again, represented. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So I'm just going to warm up the clay. And I'm just going to peel this up really carefully so we don't distend the shapes. Move it off to the side. And I'm going to make some flat clay here. Uh, if you cook, like I do, you generally don't want to use the same utensils that you cook with to do the clay work. Uh, it doesn't taste really good when you go and actually cook something with those utensils. Like this used to be my gravy ladle, but I am not going to be using it for gravy anymore after I start dipping hot wax in it. So, you kind of get my menu there. One of those common sense things that you uh, just need to say sometimes, because some of us forget and use their clay-covered rolling pin to make pie crusts. Those don't taste so good. Nope, they don't. All right, working the clay. Here I said I wasn't going to be chatterboxing, whatever. Okay, fine. Talk on the phone for a living, I might as well do it on the video. Okay. Do -do -do, do -do -do. Rolling out the clay. Okay, I'm just going to roll it both ways to stop the waves. And there's my second set. So this is pretty close in thickness. So I'm just going to trace out the shape. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Okay, so that's done. Now I've got a whole second thing that I can use here. And if I wanted to, I can just make this real easy and just cut out these parts. So I'm just going to cut out that Being really careful not to push everything around. The string is going to be kind of a problem because it's one line, and doing one line in clay is not easy, especially with this clay because it tends to push and pull around. If you can see that, but it is trying to move the handle of the paintbrush there. If I pull it away, it sticks. Everything sticks, which is makes it a great and a bad clay at the same time. I know there's other clays out there that you can use. This is the Again, it's Sculpey. I think it's like $7 or something from Michael's. Probably cheaper if you get it online. Uh, great stuff. Use it all the time. Very handy for doing these kinds of things, especially if you want to harden something permanently and can just be happy with the clay. You don't have to mess around with, you know, expensive molding or casting processes. And you can even use this to mold and cast as a base, which I do cover in other videos. So... There's my paintbrush, there's my calligraphy stylus. Uh, not the best I've ever done, for sure. But they're small, they're hard to reproduce. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rely a lot on the painting to bring out the shapes and bring out the details. So I'm gonna put that on there. As you can see, that fits just fine. We're going to try to center it as best we can. Make sure everything's lined up. Push everything down a little bit. Just to stick it to the other clay. And now we're going to do a needle and thread. So for this one, I'm just going to go real simple, and I'm just going to make a little rope. And we're going to use that rope as the thread. Uh, try to make it as thin as possible. And if you wanted to, you could even use real straight. You know what? That's not a bad idea. The downside with that is, is once you start baking this stuff, this will melt. So maybe we can do that as like an afterthought after it's all done. It's an idea. Uh, anything you want to do with this is really up to you. The world is your sandbox to play with and make as you want. So maybe if I pop a hole right here with a toothpick for the string to go through, all we really need to do is make a needle then that we could say would be the thread, the threaded needle. So there's a, a hole in there right now. 
and from the picture it goes underneath this one and it goes over this one so all we really have to do is make a needle again I'm just rolling out a snaky clay here and we're going to do that have our basic needle shape here and I'm going to put that right there now we could also to be more authentic put a hole through it for the thread to thread through and as you can see the clay is kind of accepting that so when I put it down I'm going to make sure that I am not messing up this teeny tiny little piece of clay here on what I'm doing the downside with this is that as you can see it's super delicate try not to mess it up uh, okay there now that by itself should work just fine I'm just going to trim the edge here just to get that extra chunks off and if we look at the size, that's pretty close in size to both of them, I think, comparatively. Not bad. Way better than that. So, still not as small. So, hopefully, the courage counselor will be okay with that. And again, I'm just going to clean up the edges here, try to make it a little bit more professional looking. I'm just doing a 45 chamfer on the edge. That's all I'm doing. Just nice and gentle. And once I've got this set up, I will bake it at 375, sorry, 275 for about 15 minutes. You don't want to overbake it, especially if it's not very thick. Overbaking does some weird things to the clay, makes it brittle. So we're not going for brittle, we're going for pass this stuff down from generation to generation. We also want to make sure that we put our riser or uh, our eyelid in there before we bake it. Otherwise you start screwing holes in the clay, it doesn't do things well. It gets pretty ugly. So just gonna pop this open here, grab a pin, and again we'll use the thread as it goes around. And we'll use actual thread for that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna trim this down a little bit just to make it look like a, a paintbrush handle. shape there but I don't squish the hole too much. So this is all about patience and timing. Okay. So as I'm going through here, I'm going to try to do my paintbrush shape here. Just draw some lines in there for the brush. And then there's where the collar on the brush is. This is the stylus or the part of the calligraphy the pen that touches the paper. And that's the symbol of the Cruich Knights is the crossed oils, paintbrush, and needle and thread. Now that we've got our badge done, looks relatively professional, clean anyway. I'm just going to take some of the hangers off here. So we've got some of the rough edges. Very carefully, this stuff is kind of like picking up a piece of ham. We want to try to get it hanging straight up and down, so I'm going to say the axis is right about there. And I'm just going to screw into the clay, pushing gently. I do want to wash the front and the back so that I'm not bulging out. Obviously it looks kind of bad to have this big screw sticking out the front of the metal. And I'm going to go all the way in, try to get rid of any fingerprints. And there you have it. So there's our new badge for the Curvish Counselor, which I can then bake on a piece of metal. So we'll go do that. We'll come back with part two on how to paint it and pretty it up.